Today's programme will have music both traditional and modern, from the capital and across the country. And we start south of the river from here, in Brixton, at Ruach Church, with an enthusiastic hymn of praise. Carnivals in this area of London date back to the late 1950s, at a time when racial integration was a real issue. Michael King's father, Sam, was a local pastor and one of the founders of the first carnival. It wasn't a radical political statement, it was a statement of unity. It was something that needed to be done at the time to exhibit sort of Caribbean culture, bring a positive light to Caribbean culture bring a bit of racial harmony. So it was a way of getting the information over of, these are us from the colonies. Here's an experience, an example of how we live and let us live together in harmony and peace. Carnival, according to the dictionary, means an annual festival, typically during the week before Lent in Roman Catholic countries, involving processions, music, dancing, and the use of masquerade. The carnival arose out of the backdrop of the race riots in the late 1950s. And I just wonder if you could tell me whether you think it's lost its connection to Christianity. That's a very good question. Some would say yes, but I, I think things evolve in a way because it's all encompassing. They have fun together at carnival. People enjoy one another's presence. They enjoy the whole experience. That is an expression of love, which, which is the fundamental tenets of Christianity. It's the foundation of knowing God. Police have arrested over 100 alleged gang members ahead of the weekend's Notting Hill Carnival. We've had violence, we've had robberies, we've had uh, tragic deaths and all sorts of things happening. I believe that they're, they're e always evil and I think sometimes it rears its ugly head and unfortunately it becomes very newsworthy. What I'd like to see is newsworthiness of the good things that are happening. Let's celebrate the good more. So in some ways it's evolved and changed but it's up to us to bring it back to the core root which is that God's love and every time you're enjoying yourself and loving somebody he's in the midst of it. Even though Michael was raised a Christian it wasn't until later in life that he found faith. I had clothing shops when I was younger and it happened in Brixton and a friend came, he was evangelising at Brixton Station, he was driving everybody crazy, they actually wanted to attack him <laughs> and we, we took him into the shop to protect him and he, he, he spoke to us and he evangelised and he said, look, Christ is real, everything else doesn't count, what counts is your relationship and within two weeks I was receiving Christ tearfully into my life again. And for someone like me to be called, I was like, God, are you sure you got it right? <laughs> I think you've got it wrong. But because of life experiences, and because I know where I've come from and the past that I've had, and haven't been in the church all my life, I'm honored and privileged to serve him. 
Are you still involved in the carnival? We're looking at setting up carnival pastors. So this year, some of us will be there. We'll be walking around and there to support, help, love, and answer questions. Because you find when you're in clergy colour, people ask you, is God real? Why do you love him? You know, why is there pain and suffering in the world? I blame that on the devil instantly. You know, but you know, this is the kind of thing that happens when you make yourself available to answer God's call. Next week, 32 rugby league mad fans will walk out onto the centre of the Wembley pitch and sing Abide With Me. It will be the culmination of a long search by Songs of Praise to find a choir of super fans of the sport to sing this meaningful and powerful hymn. At the age of 84, Jim McVeigh will be the oldest member of our choir. been going to Wembley for many, many, many years and I used to see the choirs and I used to sing abide with me and cry. You're asking for God to come down, steer me through the stormy waters, help me through stressful times. I never thought I'd be out there singing it and that is a dream come true. It's very quiet yet, you see, live up in about half an hour. Jim grew up supporting Batley Bulldogs Hello. and remembers his father bringing him here in the 1930s. And he had a long black overcoat and when it was bad weather, he used to put me between his legs and pull me up and I used to peep out through, through the gap. Jim is a keen volunteer 
and at every home game he can be found running the car park. Keep smiling, go on. Over the years he's done a tremendous amount of work for our club such that we made him a, an honorary member on his 80th birthday. He's a treasure, isn't he? They talk about national treasures. Jim's a battle treasure. Jim was nominated to sing in the choir by his eldest son Andrew, not only for his love of the game, but also for his work in the wider community. Two years ago, Jim fell seriously ill. I was a patient on Ward 8 at the hospital with pneumonia. And I could have died on that ward. And I came through and I can sing and I can shout up at the Bulldogs. <laughs> morning, everybody. To show his gratitude, the former club singer helped run a choir session in the hospital chapel for others with respiratory illnesses. A lot of us have bat chests and asthma and one thing or another. So my little nickname for the choir is the cough mixtures. One, two, three, ah! Again, ah! Ah! I think that they were the best singers in the world, but it does open our lungs up and gets us going, so... <laughs> He does a great job. We all suffer from the same sort of things, and it's it, it, such an uplift, really. Walk out of here, you feel 10 feet high. And next week, when Jim sings at Wembley, he'll be flying high too. I'll do my family proud, I'll do Batley Bow Watch proud, and I'll do myself proud. You wave me goodbye, cheerio, here I go on my way. In the meantime, Jim has chosen our next hymn for the strength it gives him. My favourite hymn is How Great Thou Art, and it means such a lot to me. I've sung it in the choirs. It's registered with me, and that's my favourite hymn.